Reynolds, no kidding. I mean, the fact that this guy, I mean, this is clearly a fish. Uh, his weird starting amount, and then the fact that he just flatted this bet instead of just shoving the rest of his chips in, like, you know, it's like 40%-ish of his stack is in, in the pot. Like, why not? I don't get it. So this guy calls two. And we've got a rag board. So it looks like the stacks are going to go in uh, at this point. Um, the kings have to feel good. Uh, certainly sixes, fours, and eights. Set mining didn't have the odds. So um, we can really put those hands off of these players. Uh, and we're really only worried about aces at this point. Uh, so I think it's just a good time to get it in because I think hands like jacks and queens and tens that might have even flatted there, um, go ahead and get it in. Even ace king might just think, well, he's full of it. He might have ace queen, um, which would be a horrible read. Uh, check, check, and yeah, I think just shoving the rest of the chips in, 37 bucks into 50 with a solid overpair is the right move. Uh, instead, I bet 20, and I guess I'm just trying to isolate the short stacker to get it in, but. He's going to get it in whether I bet 20 or 37. So uh, he folds, and I get him in-raised here. And so that's got to be a real bad feeling <laughs> uh, since we knew he was uh, on that range. So at this point, we're just really hoping he has queens, and we can't get away for, th for this price. Like, it's 17 and 110. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no-brainer. Make the call, and he shows aces. And I suck out, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, he still has some outs and doesn't hit him. So, yeah, kind of a weird hand. Uh, just, you know, be cognizant of uh, three betting ranges for certain players, um, especially when it's like 2 or 3%. Interesting. Once again with Kings, this time in early position, and we make it 2. And we get called by just about the whole table, it seems. Uh, wow. Four villains. And you've got kings, so you've got to feel pretty terrible about this flop. Uh, I mean, I don't know if at 50 no limit back then everyone was set mining. I mean, everyone's set mines now, but uh, yeah, you just can't feel good about this. So uh, what a ridiculous flop. <laughs> All tens. So um, this does happen, and it's an interesting situation. So if you're sitting with fives, um, you can't feel good because any pocket pair bigger than fives... Um, or anyone with a 10 has you beat. And I see people make that mistake and they just think, full house, I'm like, good, I am getting it in. And that's a terrible mentality to have because it really is likely against four other players that a bigger pocket pair like Kings is out there. Uh, is it likely that someone has a 10? Not really. So, uh, I don't know, I guess you want to tread the water a little lightly with the Kings, but you got to feel good about your chances. I mean, only aces or a hand with a 10 uh, beat you, but against four other players, you gotta be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, check, check, and um, the bet's fine, but I probably would have gotten full pot now. Um, you know, we want to get people out of this <laughs> and, and really expose the 10. If someone just shoved over the top, it'd still be a tough, maybe crying call here, but um, that's called folded fine in a six, and I mean, nothing's changed. I think another pot bet here is totally appropriate. And I really hate the bet sizing there. Um, we're either betting for value or we're betting as a bluff. And here we're doing neither. Uh, we flopped a boat. We've got um, a great hand. Chances are he's uh, maybe even playing high cards. Uh, he certainly has no draws. And most likely, I mean, my read is that he's got a pocket pair under kinks. Whether it's eights or nines makes a lot of sense. Uh, and he might just be playing along and we're going to just, you know, drive our car at 80 miles per hour straight into a wall because he's got a 10, but uh, I think that's unlikely. So he calls. I really would have, I mean, pot it, you know, 20 bucks. I think that's appropriate. So now there's 50 bucks in the pot. A three comes off. Uh, so either he hit a pair of sixes, a pair of threes, um, which doesn't help him, right? Uh, it's it's tens over kings and, and sixes over tens. Right, so uh, again, we're nothing's changed, and um, he hasn't really shown much aggression. He's just kind of, you know, called, called. Um, so it doesn't smell fishy at this point. So I'm just go ahead and uh, get it in, and that's fine. And he shows queens. Wow. So uh, real surprising he didn't three bet, but we see again he's only three betting two percent of the time. So 
uh, that's pretty much aces, kings, and ace, king uh, in certain situations. So uh, not too surprising, but um, the hand kind of played itself out. This is an interesting hand. Uh, and uh, basically, we've got sevens on the button, and a lot of people will set mine under any circumstances, and I call them suicide set miners. And despite whatever odds they might be getting, even if it's just terrible odds, you know, you're looking for 10 to 1. Um, but sometimes they just, they don't care. You three bet, you know, in this situation on a 25, 50 cent table, you'll three bet to $12 and they'll call set mining. And uh, those people are great um, and, and, you know, fantastic. Occasionally they'll hit, well, one out of 10 times, right? But um, you don't want to be that player is basically the, the situation. Uh, and so when you're in the blind and you've got a, a small pocket pair like this, you really just don't want to be set mining against one guy out of position because you, you really can't... It's just too hard and too ridiculous to, to win a hand outside of when you hit a set and then it becomes apparent that you did. But if you're multi-way, it's just fine, as we'll see in this hand. So let's examine this hand. Uh, under the gun Razor, who's a 14-8, so we're putting him on some pretty good cards there, gets called, and this is what we like to see. <laughs> uh, when we've got um, a pocket pair in the blinds and we see where it's going to be massively multi-way, we're getting huge, 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 huge implied odds to call. Uh, oh, good. He's coming along. Everybody comes along. We're certainly making a call here. And lo and behold, uh, not too surprising, I hit my set because obviously if I didn't, I uh, probably wouldn't be seeing this hand, right? So, uh, queen seven three. You don't want to donk out here. Uh, let this under the gun raiser, who's probably playing aces, kings, uh, hopefully not queens uh, or ace king, uh, maybe jacks, but probably uh, aces or kings, um, make his bet and just go ahead and do a check raise here. Uh, instead, I donk out, um, which I don't really like. Um, especially if the board's not dry. If it's a dry board, a lot of players, especially if they're aggressive, will interpret that as I'm betting my draw. However, there are no draws here. Um, and so you can only interpret this as I hit a set. And so be wary of that uh, when you're like this in a hand. Um, you might want to go ahead and raise, you know, to 12. And then if you get a, a raise, like, you, you know, you can just get away with this if you don't have a set yourself. Uh, so he goes ahead and raises, and we're just working to get it in here, and that's fine. The three bet's fine, and then he flats, which is just stupid. Uh, the ace comes, which we're not too happy to see, but at this point we're getting it in. I don't know why <laughs> I didn't just go ahead and bet twenty-seven fifty. Uh, ah, because he only has twenty-three, so it's kind of a cold-blooded uh, bet. It's like I know exactly how much you have, and I'm betting it, grr, you know. So. Uh, do I like it? I don't know. Just go all in. Uh, he goes ahead and calls and shows ace-queen, which is kind of surprising. Um, but I guess he's he's just the kind of nit that only looks at his cards. Oh, I hit top pair, top kicker. This guy's donking into me with his, you know, pair of eights or something. Ah, and um, just wouldn't let it go. And certainly when he hit, uh, you know, top two on the turn, uh, it's a bit of a cooler for him. And he's not drawing well at all. Um, I'm a 90-10 favorite, and I hold up. So uh, those are some good situations. Uh, maybe we got time to look at one more hand. Okay, we got our last hand of the video, and we got tens on the cutoff. And we got a raise here from a 13-7. Uh, but he folds to three bets 67%. And with tens, uh, I don't necessarily like to set mine here with tens behind. I mean, I think it's a, a real good move here to go ahead and three bet. Um, but uh, I have a feeling I just called to set mine or play the hand, whatever it might be. Um, and so three to the flop, and I hit top set, so that's always good news. Uh, this guy bets out really weakly, which is weird. Um, he's C betting only 36% of the time. Okay, so basically he needs to either have a pocket pair or connect with the flop in order to make a C bet. Uh, I mean, the math works out.